In Thai, it's nicknamed the Slaughterhouse. Klong Toi is Bangkok's biggest slum. 80,000 people in two square kilometres. And right in the middle of it, a blonde Aussie family. <laughs> Amongst the labyrinth of tight alleyways and open sewers, the Barker family reaches home, a wooden shack they call their mansion. Ash and Angie, along with 13-year-old Amy and 6-year-old Aidan, open their home and hearts to the poorest of the poor. And they couldn't be happier. And obviously there's drugs and there's mafia and all kinds of things around the place that make, make things dangerous, more dangerous than they would be back in Australia. But at the same time, because we know everybody here, it's, uh, it's safer. In Australia, you're anonymous at some level. Here, it's like a big urban village and it takes a, a village to raise a child. We've got a great, a great village here. <laughs> Eight years ago, they decided to swap life in suburban Melbourne for the slums of Thailand. It started with this preschool, funded by donations from Australians back home. 60 children, some orphaned by AIDS, others abandoned, abused or uncared for, get the chance at an education and hopefully a way out of poverty. We want to be preventative, so that's why we work with young children and education and more of the structural kind of change. But we're also committed to helping those who are already at the bottom of the cliff, so to speak. So the homeless, the drug addicted, and obviously people in slums is a melting pot of all, all of those things. Soon the Barkers realised adults in the slum needed jobs. Angie helped local women set up a handicraft business. The women make jewellery like this at home, and then they bring it in here and they sign in a book and they're paid per piece. So we work on double the minimum wage. We're trying to be a true alternative to prostitution and, and selling drugs. It now employs 60 women around the slum. For most, it's a rare opportunity to earn an honest wage and feed their families. The jewellery is sold by volunteers in Australia and around the world. It's low cost but looks great and a few Australian dollars make a big difference here. The profits have also been used to create other jobs including coffee carts, a catering business and a Thai cooking school for tourists. So what would make your average Australian family give up a comfortable life for this? The slum's hot, it's smelly, life here is difficult beyond what we can even imagine. But then the Barkers are a special kind of family. The lounge room is full each afternoon with kids from the neighbourhood. Amy says she's used to it. Like they're not that different, like it's, everyone's kind of the same but it's just different like where they're born and how much money they have and it's... Yeah, but apart from that, they're mostly the same. Above the chaos downstairs, the family has a small space to call their yes. own. Here's the dog. Aidan was just telling me this morning about how sad he felt when his seven-year-old friend was being beaten with a stick over and over and over again and all the kids stood around and watched. Um, so they have to see horrible things and Aidan at six is already coming up with ways that maybe he could help that not happen. So you can have those despair and hope all in the same day. In fact, most days you feel overwhelmed and most days you feel like, wow, there's, um, there's something good is going on here as well.